really helped us get a good hit rate on our trades. Well, I'm not saying that it's always going to be 100%, of course, but I think if you had a 70-80% odds in your favor, that's a very big confidence booster to keep going and trading well. Let's look at the next setup that we have here, the ATM counter trend indicator. This is a really simple one because all you need to do is apply template. You could right click on your chart and apply template. Select ATM uh, counter trend indicator and that's what you'd see on your screen. So you have this uh, counter trend indicator on the top and you have the buy and sell signals which would appear on your chart. Now let's look at the indicator first. If the indicator has a value of plus two, in other words positive, it means you have a potential buy that's setting up. Likewise a value of minus two would tell you that you have a potential sell that's setting up. Now essentially the counter trend indicator is going to help us in a great way because it's finding a zone, a cluster, a cluster of volume, a cluster of price action and once it breaks that cluster it's probably going to break out into a much bigger move or a big trend. So breaking out from clusters of volume, clusters of price, ranges, things like that is what's really creating the counter trend indicator to give you a buy or sell. Now the nice thing is probably when the market is going down this is going to be a lone ranger giving you a buy setup and that's very interesting if you trade options and the market's falling in all probability the call options are going to be at a much much lower price so you could go long on these stocks uh, looking at the counter trend indicator or if you just want to go plain simple long on the stock go ahead and just buy when you get the counter trend buy now what's the filtration that you need to do with this indicator we would like to buy when uh, you know we have a preceded down move because as the name suggests we're trying to do a counter trend trade just like if you want to go short we want to short after an up move and most importantly uh, we'd like to trade on the first breakout concept again and not going to be uh, placing fresh trades with each and every signal so uh, let's go ahead and look at a chart first and then come back so that's a good short setup and that's coming after an uptrend and this is my first sell signal to be more precise and that's why I go short below the low of that bar notice when you have the subsequent sells well really that's just confirming and helping you stay short all the way down and uh, we're not going to be disturbing that short trade you could definitely be taking some financial profits up. so let's say if this is a daily again and we've gone short at 167 maybe if you got about 12 or 13 bucks you'd be out of some trades and then probably wait for a buy so that's my first buy trade and that's exactly where I'd like to buy above the high now at this stage when you get the buy right there most classical or conventional indicators at this stage may not give you a buy. So if you're looking at things like averages and, and stuff like that, that's obviously going to take a little more time till things perk up. So we just go long above the high of that. So if, you, if you're an options trader, just go long, buy calls, and uh, place an order above that high. And the nice thing is you could, again, use that previous three or four bar concept for stops so in this case let's say the ideal stop would be this but in case you find that to be too much you would just look back one two three four five so maybe these lows so I'm looking at the last three to five bar lows as my stop now in case you're looking at this signal over here to go short don't just go short or exit your trades just because you got a sell mark there we need to break that low to make sure that uh, we should go short. Now this whole concept of buying above high and selling below low is pretty interesting because I would guess that the simplest way to test a buy signal would be well if it's really a buy at least go above the high of that bar and kind of confirm up just like if it's a sell and it's really going to go down well the most basic test the most basic confirmation that one could expect is go below the low of your your sell signal so uh, we should ha do this little confirmation because it saves us a lot of good trades. Uh, saves us from a lot of bad trades, I apologize. Uh, now, once again, if you look at this chart right here, when you're going to go along over there, don't just wait for a sell signal to get out of the trade. If you've gone along at 170 over there, when you've reached maybe 190 or maybe even 185, you probably want to take some profits out. 
and leave the rest with a stop at your entry price or till you get a sell signal. So maybe the balance of that trade uh, would get out virtually at a break even point or in case you've taken some profits on the way up, that's great. So the counter trend is very simple, just like you're seeing right now. It's just a bunch of buys and sells and as, as I was mentioning, the entire plugin works on this concept that we want automated modules. We don't want modules where you have to do the hard work of finding the trade or for that matter analyzing the stock. It's just about automating the analysis process and making life a little simple so that uh, we could really focus on our trading skills instead of just kind of worrying about looking at different indicators and doing mix and match. So uh, that's what we're achieving right here by the plugin. Now, for those of you folks who have been using the RMO in version 10, great news. I've updated this with the new RMO 2, which would come with the ADM plugin. And uh, you would probably find that it has a nice lead effect uh, on the indicator. So there's basically our RMO 2 plus, which is the blue lines that you see here, and an RMO 2 minus, which you see as the red lines plotted in this indicator window. The quickest way to apply this, again, would be just right-click, Apply Template, ATM RMO2. And once you've, you've applied that template, this is exactly what you'd get. Now let's take you through the legend of this template to start with. The first one right on top is the Zone Detector and the Zone Fill, the one we just explained. Lower than that, we have the RMO2 plus and minus plotted out uh, very quickly if the RMO2 is positive, which means the blue is above zero, you are looking at going long. And if the red is negative, which is below zero, you're looking at going shorts. This is further uh, marked on your trend ribbon at the x-axis. So if you look all the way down to the x-axis, when you see a red zone, that's telling you that the R mode 2 is negative, positive, or for that matter, neutral. Now, in case you're wondering what the uh, color of the bars are showing you, if you have the orange colored bars, that means the RMO2 is negative as well as the RMO1, which was the original RMO that you saw in, the, uh, uh, in, in, in Metastock 10. Both of them are positive or negative. So that's what's shading the bar color. So just to clarify once again, the x-axis is showing you where the RMO2 is positive and negative and the chart colors, the bar colors are showing you where both RMO1 and RMO2 are positive or negative. As I was mentioning, the, the RMO2 is to be interpreted like this. When you have a positive or a blue uh, in, in a positive territory, you need to go long above the high and negative values would be treated as going short. The nice thing is you could use the RMO2 to trade options pretty interestingly. So let's look at this. You have a cell set up here on Apple and that's kind of confirmed once again with the zone detector and the zone fill and you want to go short below the lows. Just like you have a buy which is here but this one's not a good buy because we have it in dormant mode. That means the zone detector is at zero. And the cell right there is a good cell because a couple of bars later you would notice that it goes into active mode and maybe that's that's exactly where you'd like to go short maybe two or three bars post the signal now if you look at the x-axis that's also helping us detect that uh, the market's gone into a negative mode when you see the RMO2 going negative so uh, when we look at the bar colors as I was mentioning the RMO1 and 2 are both going to be signaling that. That doesn't mean that when you see green just buy or when you see red just go sell. It's just trying to give you a feel, just trying to give you an indication of uh, how to go about it. So to sum up, if you're trying to go long, you're looking at the RMO2 plus, the blue histogram, or, uh, pardon me, not the histogram, the blue line going positive and you would like to confirm that with the zone detector, the ZD or the dark green line being